now with news you can use. Today's the, by the way, the 23rd of August, 2022. We're going to talk strictly about real estate and real estate markets today. Also, what's been going on out there. I'm going to start off with the least affordable markets uh, as of this week, nationwide going from number 15 to number one, the least affordable. Now, to give you a sense of perspective on this, uh, typically lenders don't want to see you borrowing more than about 40% of your net take home income. So in other words, if your net take home income is 4,000 a month, they don't want your payment <clears throat> on a house to be more than about 1,600, 40% of 4,000, $1,600. So that's kind of your, your benchmark for most lenders. That's kind of the numbers that they're trying to uh, keep in mind. So let's start with number 15. The least affordable uh, is the city of Boston at about 59%. So obviously that's about 50% more than what they're looking for. Oakland, 61% is number 11. Number 10, Santa Ana, California, Orange County, 62%. Number nine, Anaheim, think Disneyland, uh, 64%. San Diego brings in at eighth place at 66%. San Francisco, this is now mostly California, 67% uh, San Francisco. So in other words, uh, if you bring in $4,000 a month in San Francisco, it's going to take about two thirds of that, uh, which is about $2,600, $2,700 out of that $4,000 just for your mortgage payment. Uh, and most lenders would find that unacceptable. They wouldn't be able to get a loan. Number six, uh, Long Beach, California. 69.77%, 70%. Hialeah, Florida is fifth place with 73%. Newark, New Jersey, 78% of your paycheck will go towards your average housing payment. Number three, New York City, 82.47%, 82% of your check would go towards your mortgage payment. Los Angeles, second place at 85%. And the worst place, in the U.S., in terms of most expensive per the average income, is the city of Miami in South Florida, 87.39%. So virtually 90% of what you bring in, if you bring in $4,000 a month, net income, that means it would cost you about $3,600 there. Almost all of your income would go towards the housing payment. So uh, least affordable. These aren't the starter market type areas that you want to be in obviously. And if you are market specific, I would recommend really kind of staying away from these areas unless you're in a rehab situation. Um, and then you can find good deals because houses still sell in all of these places. All right. Uh, the second thing up on our list is the uh, boomtown pandemic. Uh, what we're seeing across the country right now is the markets where the prices went up the fastest. Uh, there are, for example, a number of markets that in the last 12 months gone, have gone up over 50% in price. So in other words, a, a house that was $200,000, say, a year ago, the 1st of July, this July, last month, uh, it was selling for over $300,000. Now, those, those are coming down. Those ones are coming down the fastest, as you might imagine. So there's a, an inverse and direct correlation between the pandemic boomtown rush to these towns and the price is going down. So, uh, for example, just on a broad geographical area, the places like Boise, Salt Lake City, Sacramento, California, Phoenix, Las Vegas, Austin, Texas, these as broad markets are starting to collapse at a faster rate than other areas of the country that either didn't enjoy as large of an appreciation during the pandemic or uh, ones that had appreciation, but uh, or a minimal appreciation during that period of time. So those would also be markets that I would stay away from uh, because you're more than likely to be able to buy something and then have it worth significantly less within a year. The third thing we want to talk about is these markets that uh, where the home value drops have been the largest. And there's some very specific numbers that we want to go through here. Um, and as a general rule, uh, some of these areas are in California, as you might imagine, and I don't want to leave California out of that. But just to give you an example, uh, during uh, the, the time period between June and July this year, which was a 30-day window, 
uh, the San Jose, Sunnyvale, Santa Clara area, think Silicon Valley, dropped four and a half percent during that month. So on an annual basis, that's 54%. So this was a market where that went up around 50% during the pandemic. Within the next year, expect that entire gain to be wiped out. At this, this kind of clip, 4.5% a month, 4.5% a month is a lot if you do it month over month over month. So a house that is, you know, a million eight right now, a year from now could be 900,000, a million dollars, million two. I don't know if it'll come down as fast as it went up. I think it, and generally what we've seen is right before the peak on these markets, the things go up faster, but then when it slows down, it slows down at a more gradual rate. But right now, <clears throat> we're on track for that kind of a loss, over 50% loss. Uh, the second area with the biggest loss uh, is the San Francisco, Oakland, Berkeley area of California, 2.8%. You take that number times 12, and it gives you about a 32, 33% annual drop is what they're looking at. Uh, and keep in mind, nationwide during that period of time, from June 1st to July 1st this year, so about... 45 days ago, 50 days ago, uh, nationwide, there was only a one-tenth of 1% 1 drop in house prices across the board. So you've got a situation here where it's around 40 times the rate that the nation had as a whole in terms of price drops. Um, next up, let me give you just some general quickies here that can give you an idea of where these things have been going. Uh, the, the, the one that saw the next biggest decrease was the city of Phoenix, 2.8%, which is once again, 34% per year. Austin, Texas, 2.7%. Sacramento, California lost 2.5%, 30% on an annual basis. So a house there, an average house is currently about 611,000. Uh, so it got to probably seven, 750 figure that that price will be 30% less uh, in another 10 months. So in other words, it started at 700, uh, it'll drop at least 200, it'll drop to the 500 range. It's already dropped from 700 to 611. It'll probably drop down to 500, maybe even less within a year. Uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, 2.5%, San Diego, 2.5%. So once again, these are all, they tend to be these larger cities. If you guys know our metric, if you're if you are city specific in your marketing, uh, once again, I encourage you to kind of go by our big five, standard five to look for, uh, which are uh, an, an economy that's based on multiple industries. So if you're, and it's a house that's, or a city that's probably 100 to four or five, 600,000 population, below a million for sure. Not one of the biggest cities in the country or even that top tier, but something below the rank of 40 in, in terms of largest cities in the country. Uh, multiple industries, so you don't want it based on just high tech or just on farming or just on manufacturing. You want multiple sources of income. You need uh, natural resources uh, of a, a wide diversity in the area because people tend to gravitate, especially new home buyers, tend to be more uh, interested in entertainment and uh, recreation and things like that than maybe past generations. So, for example, uh, you know. People want to be in areas that have places to hike, places to ride bikes, uh, great outdoor type things to do, uh, lakes, rivers, those kind of things. So you want that uh, as well. Um, you, you need a population center that is within about 50 miles of a large college because about 60% of the people who graduate from university in this country end up living within about 50, 60 miles of where, that's, uh, where that college that they went to is. So you're gonna have a continuing population increase and growth if you're near a big university. And then finally, uh, number five would be, in my opinion, uh, more of a red state than a blue state. And the reason being is there's less regulation. So a state that it has a conservative state, state government, that type of thing, will have less regulations more people will go there. Uh, you've already seen this in California. You've had a lot of folks, uh, including Tesla, Hewlett Packard, have moved from the Bay Area of California, Silicon Valley. They've moved down to Austin, Texas, which is more of a red state, of course, obviously. California's blue, Texas is red, but a lot less uh, 
you know, regulation and that type of thing. And that's where people want to live. They want to live in a less regulatory environment. So those are the big five that you got to keep your eyes on if you want to be in a decent market long term. Um, I would not, I would definitely stay away from, you know, some of the big cities we just looked at in terms of holding a rental property long term. Uh, not not a good place, especially in, in some of the goofier states like we have out here on the left coast. Uh, we've got some very unusual laws that protect uh, tenants to the detriment of landlords. So if you're going to go long term with hold stuff, once again, I would look at that same kind of metric uh, to be in. Um, and, you know, although you make less, you know, per month, uh, it's a safer bet. It's a slower incline imply price. There's a better underlying economy. They don't have all the goofy stuff that we've got in some of these other states, California and New York, for example. Um, and it's just a better environment which to work and live. So that's my two cents worth. Um, anyway, that's it for news you can use for today.